Hi, my name is Connie Paclanis and you're watching the video Force Duction and Force Generation Test. In this video, we'll be discussing how to utilise these tests, the Force Duction Test and the Force Generation Test, in assessing the passive and active movement of the globe. Now, we've discussed duction testing um, in the video on ocular movements. When we are assessing ocular movements and note that there is a limitation in movement, using versions or whilst assessing versions, what we should subsequently be doing is covering one eye and looking at the ductions and seeing where there's an improvement in, in movement. And this assists us in uh, distinguishing or differentiating between a neurogenic palsy and a mechanical restriction. Now the force duction test is indeed the definitive test of looking at or assessing ductions. So at some point in time, a patient who has a limitation in movement should have an FDT performed on them. And this is sometimes performed in theatre or it can be performed in clinic, but at some stage it's important that these patients have a force duction test performed to differentiate between neurogenic and mechanical restrictions. So um, as you will have noted, it's only performed on patients where there is a limitation that's been noted on ocular movements and you are able to assess force duction in all positions of gaze or to assess each extraocular muscle um, for mechanical restriction. Okay, so the force duction test, as I mentioned a moment ago, can be performed in clinic, uh, but the patient will need to clearly be a cooperative uh, patient, so children generally will not have this performed in clinic, so the other alternative is to perform it in theatre. And again, as noted there, it can be performed in all directions of gaze. The method utilised for the force duction test requires that you either use forceps or sterile cotton tips. And of course, in the first instance, we'll have established what limitation we have observed. So in this particular example to the right, we have a patient who has a limitation of right AB duction. The electoral rectus is underacting or appears to be underacting. And what we will do is apply a local anaesthetic and ask the patient to look in the direction of restricted gaze if, of course, our patient is awake during testing. So in this instance, the patient will be asked to look into right gaze. Now, as the patient looks into right gaze, in this example, the eye will reach midline but will not move beyond midline. What the uh, clinician will then do is attempt to assist the movement of the eye into abduction using the forceps or the sterile cotton tips. And what you will feel is either a freedom of movement or you'll feel um, restriction. And it's this that determines whether you have a mechanical restriction or a, um, a neurogenic palsy. And there are videos that have been loaded as part of the playlist for this um, section of the inquiry. And have a watch of those as you will see what a free movement looks like as compared to a restricted movement. Okay, so in interpreting um, the findings, as I just indicated, resistance encountered indicates that you've got a mechanical restriction and no resistance indicates you've got a neurogenic issue. Uh, when we record a positive force duction test, we're indicating that resistance has been noted and we have a mechanical restriction. So in clinical notes, if you see positive FDT, what the indication is there is that there is a mechanical restriction present. Okay, on the other hand, we have the force generation test. The force generation test, unlike the force duction test, is actually looking at active movement of the globe rather than passive movement. What this means is that we're asking the patient to move their eye and assessing them as they're trying to move their eye. And we're gaining an understanding of the potential function of the muscle. This can help us differentiate between partial and total pauses and is usually used in patients who have a known mechanical restriction. So you're aware that the eye is mechanically restricted. However, what you're not sure of is if the muscle has potential for function. So as an example, um, there are instances where we may have an abduction deficit. So let's say, for instance, the right eye cannot abduct 
It's possible that that's caused by a neurogenic palsy of the lateral rectus, or it's also possible that it's caused by a mechanical restriction of the medial rectus. So say, for instance, the medial rectus has undergone contracture, the lateral rectus is actually unable to abduct because there's contracture of the medial rectus. So a force generation test would assist us in having a look at that lateral rectus and determining its potential function. Here we have an example of a patient with a right abduction deficit and in this instance Again, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to have to ask the patient this time to make a movement for us. So what we will do is actually push or place the eyes in the opposite direction to the limitation. So in this example, we would ask the patient to look into left gaze as the limitation is in right gaze. Now, the forces will be used to stabilise the eyes in this position. And then the patient is asked to look into the direction of where the limitation exists. So the patient in this example will be asked to look into right gaze. So what the clinician will feel is the amount of tug or pull of the eye as the patient attempts to move that right eye into abduction. So how do we interpret the result? Essentially, if a tug and pull is felt, there is an indication there that there is a potential muscle function. Now, it's important to note here that it takes quite a bit of experience to be able to sense uh, tug and pull in relation to the force generation test. Uh, there are instruments to assist in, in measuring muscle force, but we won't be talking about that in this particular video. In summary, the force duction test assesses passive movement of the globe, such that the patient is asked to look in the direction of limitation, and then the clinician will try to passively move the globe, as compared to the force generation test, which assesses active movement, such that the patient is asked to look in the direction of limitation, uh, whilst the clinician is actually trying to stabilise the eye in the opposite direction, and then feels for the tug and pull as the patient is actively attempting to move the eye. So the mechanisms of each are different and therefore the purpose of conducting the test is different. The force duction test is utilised as a test to differentiate between mechanical and neurogenic palsies. And when we have a positive force duction, it's an indication that we have a mechanical restriction. So where you suspect there might be a mechanical restriction, you must perform an FDT, whether in clinic or in theatre. A force generation test, on the other hand, is a test utilised where often there is a mechanical restriction and what we're trying to do is determine if the muscle has potential function. This brings us to the conclusion of this video. Thank you for watching.